So you just got your new view board. Let's learn how to connect your laptop. You might wonder why would I connect my laptop? Can't you just use the board by itself? Yes, you can. And we have a video on how to use what we call the view board OS. However, a lot of times it's easier just to connect your laptop because your stuff's already on there. You already signed into your browser and it's just a little bit more powerful than using the board by itself. So let's talk about how to do this now. Your view board will come with some cables. Uh, one of them is this cable. This is what we call a USB-C cable. A USB-C cable allows us to connect our laptop to the board using one cable. This will do audio, video, touch, and it will actually charge your laptop. If your laptop doesn't have USB-C, then we also include the HDMI and the USB touch cables. Both of these cables need to be connected to your laptop in order to use both audio, video, and touch. So HDMI, that's this cable here. You're probably familiar with it. This is what we use to connect things to our TVs at home. And then this cable, this is essentially a printer cable, is called USB A to B. This is what enables touch. On the side of the board, this is where we actually connect our cables. So you'll notice on the side, there are ports for the HDMI, there are ports for the touch, and then there is one single USB-C port. So let's go ahead and connect our laptop using the USB-C. Now, when you connect your laptop, what you're gonna notice is that the board automatically switches to that input or whatever you connect it to. So you can see here, the board is switching to my laptop. Because I used USB-C, it is now showing my laptop. I also have touch and interactivity uh, because I'm using that one cable. One of the downsides to USB-C is it's slightly short. So you can only go about six foot with a USB-C cable. When you're using the HDMI, and the USB touch cable, you can go a little bit further up to about 16 feet. Now let's talk about how to use this once we're connected. On the front of your board, you have physical buttons, a home button, uh, volume buttons, things like that. If you ever accidentally press that home or that house button, it's gonna take you back to this screen. And you might wonder what happened to your laptop. Uh, your laptop's still connected, we just need to know how to switch what we call inputs. So. You're gonna notice on this screen, there's a sign-in mode or a guest mode. All you have to do is just really quickly say use as guest. And the reason why we're using it as guest is it's giving us access to the board's inputs. So see down here on the bottom left, how there's this one or this number one and this kind of oval looking icon, that's the USB-C port. That's the port that my laptop is currently connected to. If this was HDMI one, then it would show the number one, but it would be the HDMI looking connector instead. So if I press that button, you'll see that it instantly takes me back to my laptop. Now there's one other way we can do this. So let's go ahead and press our home button again. Here we are, we're on the Viewboard OS. We wanna switch back to our laptop. On the Viewboard OS home screen, you're gonna notice you have these little side toolbars, these little arrows. If I press that at the very bottom, you're gonna see a rectangle with an arrow going into it. If I press that, that opens up my input menu. Here you can see that the type C or that USB-C is active because it's highlighted. HDMI is grayed out. However, if I was connected with HDMI, that would not be grayed out. I can select my USB-C and now it's going to switch me over to my laptop. So let's talk a little bit about how to use your laptop once it's connected. So anytime you touch, this is like clicking with your mouse. So every single tap is a single click. For example, if I wanna open up Google Chrome, I can click on it down here and it touched and opened it. If I wanna click and drag, it's just a touch and drag like this. And that is gonna allow me to interact with the board. Same with scrolling websites. If I wanna type, if you look very closely down here on the bottom right, there's this little keyboard icon. It's down by my clock. This keyboard, if I press it, will open an on-screen keyboard allowing me to type. Now, this is not turned on by default. You need to activate it yourself. So let me show you how to turn on your on-screen keyboard. 
First, what you wanna do is you wanna find the task bar on Windows. That's this bar that runs along the bottom. And I want you to find a blank spot. It's very important. Find a space where there's no icon or text or anything like that. You're gonna take your finger and you're gonna do a two second touch and hold. So one, two. And what I actually did there is I did a right click. So anytime you tap, that's a left click. Two second touch and hold, that's gonna be a right click. So I'm gonna to go to my taskbar settings. And then from here, I'm gonna find the option that says touch keyboard. Notice that my touch keyboard is set to always. Yours probably says when no keyboard is attached. I want you to make it to always so that you always have your keyboard icon. And then that'll be available to you whenever you wanna type. So once your laptop's connected, it's pretty easy to use because you have your browser, your content, you just kind of need to know how to use touch. But let me introduce you to the whiteboard program. So ViewSonic makes a program called My Viewboard. It's a digital whiteboard. It may be installed on your computer already, but if it's not, you can go to www.myviewboard, one word, dot com slash download. This is where you can get the Windows version of My Viewboard. Again, notice I'm using My Viewboard here on my computer. It's installed on my desktop. So I'm gonna give it a double click, one, two, cause that's how we open things on our desktop. It's a double click, tap, tap. Nice little pro tip if you're ever using your board and you double tap something, just put your hands down and count to three. Give it a few seconds to open. If it didn't work, you're welcome to try it again. So what we're looking at here is the My View Board software. This is what we call the canvas. If I touch, it's going to annotate. Now, the board is multi-touch. That means you can have multiple students writing at the same time. That default tool that I'm using down here is called the pen tool. It's in the main toolbar. Your board also comes with a stylus, a couple of them. They actually magnetize to the front, which is nice and convenient. But I can use that to write as well. And actually, I uh, recommend using the stylus because when you're writing or annotating with the stylus, uh, because you have some distance from the board, you don't accidentally touch with your sleeve or your bracelet or your knuckles or anything like that. Now, if I want to change my pen color, all I have to do is touch the pen icon one more time. That's gonna open up my pen menu where I can adjust things like the thickness of my pen or I can change the color. So if I wanted to switch to purple here, now you'll notice I have purple pen. If however, I grab the stylus and I write with the pointy side, notice that it's thin red pen. That's because the board can detect the size of objects. It knows what the pointy side is. That pointy side can only be a pen and its default color is red. If I wanna change the color of the pointy side, all I need to do is touch the pen icon with the pointy side. That opens up my pen menu. I can adjust the slider. Let's make it a little bigger and let's pick orange for the pointy side. So you'll notice that if I use touch, it's purple. Thick side of the stylus is purple, but the pointy side is now orange pen. So you can have two different colors at the same time. Now, as my uh, board fills up, I might wanna erase some things. So next to the pen tool, we have our eraser. If I touch that once, it activates the eraser. This now lets me touch, and then you can see that it's erasing instead of writing. Keep in mind though, that pointy side, even though the eraser is active, the pointy side will still always be a pen, no matter what. Now the board, because it can detect the size of objects like the pointy side of the stylus, it can also detect another gesture. So if you're ever writing or annotating with the pen tool, you don't actually have to select the eraser. If you just make a flat hand like this, what it's gonna do is it's going to automatically activate the eraser for you. We also include an actual eraser tool. So if you wanna use this instead of your hand, you can use that as well. And that magnifies right up under the ViewSonic logo. Now, if I need to make a new page, you're gonna notice here, we have this icon, we call this piece of paper plus or your new page button. If I click that, I didn't erase everything, I'm just on page two. And the way I know I'm on page two is right here, it shows the number two. And if I click on that, it's gonna give me a little PowerPoint preview of all of my pages. Let's go ahead and make another page and I'll show you one other useful thing. In the bottom left corner, on the very far left, you're gonna see an icon that has 
double trials on it or double mountains. Okay, these are your backgrounds. So if I click on this, you're gonna notice that it opens up your background menu. You're gonna have all these templates you can choose from like paper and maps. There's uh, fields if you coach sports, periodic table, graph paper, line paper. Whenever you find something you like, all you have to do is select it. It's gonna ask you, do you wanna to apply to all pages or this page? We always recommend choosing this page because then it's just the page you're on, not every page in your presentation. And you'll see now I have line paper. So essentially with your view board, the best way to use it is just to plug in your laptop. You can use the USB-C cable, which is very simple. If you don't have USB-C, you can use the HDMI and the USB cable together to give you that touch and audio video. Once that's all connected, simply use your hand like you use the mouse and you can make your board interactive. When you use the My View Board software, things get really interesting, right? You have some really useful tools available to you. We only covered a few things, the pen, the eraser, some backgrounds. So be sure to watch our other My View Board videos. We dive really deep into the software. We'll teach you how to set up a My View Board account, how to import things from your Google Drive, like maybe your Google Slides and make them interactive as well as how to save your lessons. So thanks for watching and be sure to check out those videos.